Okay, I'm hoping that this is working okay. If we have anyone watching, you'll have to let me know. Should be working good. Okay. <clears throat> so, my headphones just fell out. Whatever, they don't really need to be needed. So today, I am going to be kind of just going through some stuff. I have to uh, unbox a few things and organize uh, this Moonraker's box one more time. I just need to double check, make sure uh, everything looks good. I didn't think I did it very well. Hey, welcome to the stream, Mr. I don't know how to say that, Mr. What is it? Shran Wan, <laughs> something like that. So I'm going to be unboxing a few things. I want to make sure everything is working okay. Uh, we got two new things in. Uh, first thing is Libertaria. This is from uh, Stonemeyer. So we're going to be taking a look and see what's inside there. I got this thing sent to me. And I think this would be really cool for my cabin. So I want to check out what this looks like. Um, it's a uh, wooden cutout of the world. So we'll be checking that out. And then the primary thing is this Moonraker's Titan edition. So we're going to be kind of checking that out, organizing that. In preparation for my review for the um, the final Kickstarter is coming up, so it's been a while since I've streamed. Hey guys, welcome to the stream, guys. It's been a while since I've streamed, so uh, I might be rusty in terms of getting myself, you know, used to doing this again. It's been a while uh, since I've done it, so you guys are gonna have to let me know. 6 a.m. in Belgium, off to work. Well, good morning. That is uh, that is an early working day. I, I don't uh, I don't feel uh, like I want to do that again in a long time. So, well, let me go and pull up the PDF in an email that was sent to me that has how I'm supposed to do this. So yesterday, I organized this myself, and it was a mess. It took me like hours, like probably like two hours of playing around trying to figure it all out. And I was like, man, I think I figured it out as best I can. And then one of my friends was like, you realize they sent you uh, an email 
with how it's supposed to go. So I'm gonna reference that. And mostly what I'm concerned about is I just wanna make sure that the cards are in the proper area. So, okay, let's go and switch, I think this scene. Uh, the top screen is not working. Look at that. This top camera, why aren't you on? Let me figure out what's going on with that camera. Hold on. I'm not quite sure why that uh, cable seems faulty, but it definitely seems a little faulty. I feel like that I might need a new HDMI. Yeah, it keeps cutting out. What's up with that? I might need a new HDMI cable for my top camera because it keeps coming off. So for work, let's just cut back to here for now. I'll, I'll work on that in a second. So for my work, I, I do real estate. I sell um, properties. I manage properties. Uh, I would say I do real estate investment as well, getting into buying and selling my own properties, managing those. Um, that's kind of been my, my profession for 10 years. I used to work for uh, Chase Bank, which is JP Morgan Chase prior to uh, basically going into real estate full time. So that's kind of that's kind of my profession. Hmm. This is really kind of frustrating. You don't know how and now it's working again. So that's really frustrating. So let me show you guys what this looks like. So this is the new uh, this will be a Kickstarter coming out I think at the end of July. I could really I could find out what the time is. Let's turn the music down a little bit. So this is a Kickstarter coming out the end of the Is that working? I'm not sure if that's actually doing anything. It might be. It's been a while since I've played with these settings. It's, it's almost been a year, actually. Maybe it has been a year. So this will be a new Kickstarter. It's basically um, Moonrakers. There are three expansions. So these are the three individual boxes. And those all fit in this giant box, which is called Titan. So uh, you could buy, I'm assuming they're gonna have each individual expansion if you just wanted to buy one with the base game. I'm assuming that's what they're gonna do. Uh, and then if you want all three and you want a single storage solution, the Titan box is for that. So I tried my best to organize this in, in the manner that I felt like was the only way that it could possibly fit. So we got the two player, this is the, kind of the standard player board here in the center. And then I've got rule books and um, this is the comic book that comes in the game. So I got that up here uh, for, for that, you know, just to keep it kind of safe. So we got the rule book. Here is what I'm assuming is, this is for Nomad. This is the new territory expansion for Nomad. And then um, right here are the player boards. So this is kind of how I assumed it would go. This was a, this part was definitely the hardest, doing all this stuff. And then I got random manuals for each of the expansions. And then they got this upper tray here. I don't know if we're intended to use it. I feel like we are. Uh, so, and, but like these don't feel like they should go there, but I don't know where else they would go. Let me, the screen cut out again. What? That is going to be so incredibly frustrating of why this camera keeps cutting out. I just, that, that just so, is so frustrating. You know, as a content creator, we, you know, technology is 
definitely our biggest like hurdle because you can't control it sometimes like and I'm like do I need to buy another HDMI cable I just bought this HDMI cable for this camera uh, you know I guess that's a, that's a whole nother story in terms of why I have new cameras and whatnot but this one is like a 25 foot one and it has done well for me but I haven't used it in a while and uh, it you know it's kind of a lower end HDMI cable so I'm wondering if it's just going bad because it's like there must be like a kink somewhere in the cable that's blocking the signal that's the only thing I think of and I can't tell if it's down or not because when I'm at this scene it covers up my primary so I have to switch over to this and you can see it's down I'm gonna go check it one more time see if I can figure it out be right back That will have to be my attempt. I apologize if um, uh, I was gone for a little bit. I don't know what is causing it to kind of cut out like that, but that'll be my attempt to uh, fix it. If that doesn't work, I'm probably just gonna chat, answer some questions and whatnot, see if anyone's here. So while we have it, let's take advantage of it. So this is kind of what um, I was looking at this. It's the game trays insert and I wasn't positive how to set this up. I kind of winged it and this could definitely be wrong. So what I have over here on my computer is a email that should kind of tell me how this is supposed to go. Let me pull it up again. Just had it pulled up. Okay, so IQ token, so IO token. So the IO tokens are supposed to go here. So I did that wrong. The IO tokens are from the, I think they're from the overload expansion if I remember right. And they're basically uh, tokens to count, do counters for in things that can stay static on the board. So we're gonna put those in here. We can actually probably just do this now. Don't need the chatting board up. 
kind of hard to fit all these things in here though definitely a lot of them okay uh, then they have so I was right here they've got faction rep tokens so I was I guess that right then they've got nomad ship tokens and base game ship tokens so I was correct with that uh, the credit tokens I got correct and it looks like the dice they want the dice to go over here on the far side oh there goes my screen again there goes the screen again cannot figure that one out for the life of me hey what's up how what is, is i want to say your name is kevin i don't know very many k names so i'm just a guessing k i don't know what what that could be kevin i'm gonna just assume it's kevin And you guys are going to have to let me know uh, the video quality. Is it good? Do I need to do anything? Let me know because uh, this is work in progress here. So we got that done. Uh, let's check if the other camera's back. Hey, we got it back. I don't know why it's cutting in and out. I will, it's Amazon Prime Day still. I will, uh, Kyle, there are, yep, that's a good guess. That would have been a better guess, Kyle. You know, almost all my friends, I have so many Kyles. And this thing cuts out. This upper screen is going to drive me literally up the wall. Up the wall. Uh, because I'm trying to show you guys something. Well, maybe you can see it. And we'll just keep going and uh, work. So this is, again, the, the lid. So I guess I got some of that right. And then right here I have all the cards. So... Um, Thanks, bud. I appreciate that, Clayton. Thank you for dropping in. Except for this camera. My upper camera keeps cutting out. It's so incredibly annoying. So incredibly annoying. Oh, that no one's not that one. And then look at me. Which one am I doing? What am I doing over here? Push too many buttons. So, let's, let's go here. I'm still learning all my buttons. Let's go back here. Okay, so up here, they want base game stuff. So this is base game, looks like ship parts. So that's what we got here. Good. Did I actually guess this all right? Base game objectives. Then they want binding ties. Binding Ties expansion. So now what I'm looking for is I want to see what the um, expansion symbol is for Binding Ties. I would hope that they put it in the front, but I'm not seeing it in the front. And so if I can identify what the expansion symbol is, that would be super simple. Okay, I guessed it right. So binding ties is this one. So we got ship parts. Let's pull back up. Okay, so we got binding ties here. And then, hold on. So I didn't quite get it right. They want it to go ship parts, then objectives. And then they want overload, which I assume I got that right because it's massive. Yep. So that's overload. Overload. Then they have this one empty, which I did have. And then they have nomad. Nomad ship parts. So they still have base, they have still open stuff, which is interesting. And then they have objectives. That makes sense. Now that I'm seeing kind of what it looks like, it makes sense what they've got going on here. So that goes there. Do any of you guys have this game?
Ugh. Even the main camera cuts out sometimes. I still get, I get a no signal on my end a few times here, even on the main camera. So that makes me wonder if it's OBS as well. So you guys have to let me know if you're getting a no signal pop up uh, every once in a while. Cause if that's the case, it might be my computer, my capture card or my OBS. And that'll help me identify the problem. Cause right now I thought it was just my upper camera but I just saw it on my preview screen here. Yeah, that one's still out. So the upper one is still out. Which is funny. So we'll just keep this up. Yeah, I'm not sure what that camera is. Maybe I'll just leave it on this one. That way I can see it pop up if it ever does pop up. No, wrong one. Gaming. That's gaming. Gaming 2. This is the one I'm referring to. Okay. You saw it once, Duke. Yeah. This is definitely going to be a trial error stream as I try to figure out why this camera here is not working. See, now it works. So, well, you'll kind of have it up at, at times while I work, and then I will probably troubleshoot and figure out what's going on. Maybe I'll, uh, after this stream, swap some HDMI cables and see if it's the HDMI cable. Hey Red, welcome, welcome, welcome Red. So we are going through uh, the Titan um, edition Kickstarter uh, Moonrakers. I'll be doing a, uh, we're doing a full playthrough on Thursday with my group. Um, and then I'll be getting a review out hopefully this, this weekend. Uh, I'm also having to drive. I have to drive so far on Thursday to get to one of my new constructions and um, kind of be really, really tight on time for a little bit. Okay, so this is the Nomad event cards. These are brand new cards to Moonrakers. And then I've got a bunch of, these are sealed cards. See, it just happened again. So that makes me wonder what, why is it doing that? It's losing source. It's very interesting. So there's a bunch of cards that were inside this Titan edition box. And I think they're duplicates of the mini expansion boxes that I have. So I'm leaving them sealed for now until I know exactly what they are. Cause I'm assuming those are um, meant to be for like people who didn't have the mini expansions. So we're just gonna pull them out for now though, just so we can keep organizing. Okay, so up here we're supposed to have base game Base game, base game. I don't know what, they have orange. I don't know what orange is supposed to be. Orange. Hmm, so these are orange. What do you think, orange objectives? It's probably, So this is probably right. This is red. That's probably right. And then what do we got next? This is, this is, what is this one? I think that might be overload. I feel like that's overload. Again, got to check a expansion symbol. I'm believing it's overload. Yeah, it's overload. Okay. Pull this back open. So then we have something here. We have binding ties, something, and then overload. I think that's exactly where I just had it too. I think I actually guessed correctly, which I'm gonna be pretty shocked if I did. Yeah, I think these are supposed to be the, the 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 crew that you can hire. That was the only one that was a little not sure about. So then binding ties is next. 
we know that this is binding ties. So binding ties goes here. Then binding ties goes there. Okay, we're looking good. Okay. And then um, this was overload, overload, and then so we have two empty, which I have, and then the nomad. So I think the only one I got wrong was binding ties, but that's all good. So now we can put these ones back in until we figure out what the heck you know they are. I'm assuming they're extras. How's everyone's week going, by the way? Hope you all are having a good week. Okay, and then up here we have reactor. That's where I have shields. Oh. Thrusters. This looks like something's wrong here. Yep. So we have misses. Here's thrusters. So this was all wrong. I don't think it's that big of a deal though. All right, so we have uh, these are the base game now. So we have base game reactor, base game thruster, shields. I'm probably going to hold off on unboxing the other stuff until I can figure out the camera situation. It did the thing again. It did the flash. I really am curious what that is. And then we got damage. Yeah, this makes sense. And then we have miss. Okay, those are done. And then we have reactor. Reactor plus. It's a specific reactor. So reactor plus. And this probably doesn't matter too much. I honestly think... Uh, knowing Ivy Studios, I'm assuming that they're going to put um, indicators on here. That's what they did with the base game. And then we have thrusters. Nope. So this is going to be wrong. So thrusters plus. Nope. All right, there's thrusters plus. It's the last one, of course. Thrusters X. Shields plus. Shields X and then damage and that's it. So we got this all reorganized. So for the most part, I think I did a pretty good job kind of guessing my way through this. Only had a few things kind of wrong, but that's about it. All right. So let's put this here. Let's put it back together. This is a little long. Let's put it back there. So we're going to grab that lid. So here, by the way, you can't really see it, uh, but we have expansions can go here. If you have play mats, they will go here as well. I don't have the play mats. So this lid comes back. You kind of have to push these things over. And then how do I do this? This is the part. Maybe I can check their, their sheet. This is the part that I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So they have expansion manuals. Yeah, that's what I did. Kind of nuzzle down there. They want all the expansion manuals down there. Then player boards. And then I put this thing flat. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how they do it. And then I did, um, I think I had these in here, didn't I? I had this manual in here somehow. Somehow. Not quite sure. And then I think I had these on top. And that's that. I think we're done. Hey, look how the camera came back just at the end. Okay, so that is Moonrakers. Titan Edition kind of unboxed not really just kind of show you guys this game is huge 
And if you own Moonrakers, this is this is the original box size. Just to give you kind of reference if you own Moonrakers. Beautiful box. Ivy Studios has definitely always killed it with how they do their expansions or their games in general. I really like their games. I like Ivy Studios a lot. So there we go. How is everyone doing? Now we got the upper camera. That is so frustrating. If I was confident I would unbox this guy, but I'm not so confident that the screen is going to stay up. But this I picked up. This is a wooden city decorative map. That's like a puzzle. I was told and it can go on walls, does not require glue. And uh, I have a cabin that we're building and I thought it'd be kind of fun maybe to throw this up in the cabin. So there goes, see, there goes the camera. It's just not very consistent. I can't trust it tonight to unbox anything, to show anyone relatively decent video. So that's, that's something that this was actually sent to me. That's actually Austin from Ivy Studios messaging me. So that's that. Okay, so, and then I got this. Stone Meyer sent this to me as a review copy. Uh, Libertaria, 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 la la. How do you pronounce that? Libertalia, Libertalia. I think that's how you say that. And uh, this is a re reimagining, I guess. It's a, it was an original game made, and now it's been kind of redone. So I'm kind of curious, though. I want to open this one up. I've been trying to do some Stonemaier reviews. I've done a few of my own Stonemaier games, and then Stonemaier sent me this as like, um, hey, you know, here's a game. If you haven't, do you have this one? I said no. I have almost all your other games, but I don't have that one. So they sent it to me. So let's check it out. Maybe we're gonna get lucky. Maybe we're gonna get lucky. Okay, so what do we got here? Looks like we got some uh, manuals. Stonemeyer's consistent with their uh, very good feeling, high quality uh, manuals. And they have the Automa. So if you're interested in solo play, I, I don't really play the Automa with Stonemeyer games, but they always, they always offer the Automa system. And then we've got the punch. It's actually pretty nice that they have these in here to say which one's left, which one's right, but half of them have fallen out. So I'll have to make sure I just double check what everything is uh, before I put them away. Uh, but we have, these are spin down dials. looks like for scoring. Yeah, there it goes. We lost it again. Keeps going away, man. So frustrating. Uh, looks like this is some more punch and some coins. It came back. If, as long as I have it, I'm going to try to use it. I have not played the original one of this one. Um... So I'm assuming these are the scoring dial things, these little treasure chests here. And I didn't realize it was like airships. These look like airships. Was the original one airships? Winds of Galecrest is the subtitle. I didn't realize it was an airship game. I thought it was a pirate game. Is it a pirate airship game? So these all look the same. I mean, they've got piratey things. I need to check your dad again. I don't, I, I see you do a lot of Kickstarter news and stuff. I don't know, do you do reviews? I haven't seen a review, I feel like. So this is the player board. Art is beautiful. Really good, good looking art. It's got a good feel to it. I like these ships kind of flying in the sky. You kind of got that Zendikar thing from Magic the Gathering with these uh, floating 
islands uh kind of um avatarish too really good art backside Ooh, there actually is something on the backside it's a uh stormy version a stormy version i wonder if it's different or are they the same hmm interesting I actually didn't expect to see more player board on the backside. I kind of expected like maybe a full art or something, but not actually uh, gameplay required material. Okay, so what do we got in here? Yeah, just the pirate ships. So we got a bag. This is an interesting bag. This is an interesting bag. Very, very interesting. Sorry about the camera going out again, guys. It's, 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 it's definitely being annoying. So these are old chips. They got different types of logos. The greens have like pirate maps. Kind of cool. Hold on one second. All right, and now we got some cards. So let's see what these say, see if I can understand it. If this infantry is in the rightmost character in the island, it gained five coins, I'm assuming what it says. That's pretty easy to understand. Discard a brawler from an opponent's ship. If you do gain two reputation at nighttime, gain one coin. Cool. So they are definitely piratey looking dudes. So I'm looking forward to playing what this is. Man, here are those bags again. Interesting bags. We'll get this review up in the next month. Uh, right now, if I were to go through my review schedule, there's a few things I've got on the docket. Let's put this stuff back so I don't lose anything. We can kind of talk about what I've got coming up, what I'm working on. And kind of what my plans are for the channel a little bit. Um, because we're all... And that's kind of the reason why I'm streaming right now. Is I'm testing things. I want to uh, get things organized. So that I can... I didn't put these rule books back. So I can get things done for the channel. So let's do this. And we'll talk about what we have on the docket. And then kind of talk about what's coming up. Okay, so reviews. We're working on Marvel Dice Throne. Uh, we just finished that. We're waiting for Oathsworn. Oathsworn is delayed. So I was hoping I would have Oathsworn by now. Uh, I do not. I'm a little. So that means that puts me very far behind other content creators. And not just making content, but playing the game. Oh, so, and I had a whole bunch of content. I actually, I put notes on my phone and, uh, you know, like ideas and things that I want to play around with and, and work around through. And, uh, Oats, when I had a bunch of ideas and I'm like, man, I am so far behind because I don't have the game. Uh, you know, so hopefully that arrives soon. I haven't got any shipping notifications or anything like that. So we'll see. Uh, other than that, we have stars of Akar Akaris, uh, that'll be on the way. Uh, they're they're mailing me a review copy, so that'll be cool. Um, that is what I also backed, so when I get the backing too. But they're mailing me a review copy, which is cool. And uh, what else? What else do we got going on? Uh, I think that's it in terms of reviews. Man, I'm sorry about that. The Marvel Dice Thrones um, not arriving to Canada yet. You know, I, I've got mixed feelings on Marvel Dice Thrones. I will say that my first play, I have never played Dice Thrones. And my first play of Dice Throne was extremely underwhelming. Um, the second play and the third play were better. 
the first play I played uh, Captain Marvel and I thought maybe there would be more strategy involved. Maybe you can trigger different types of um, abilities. I also thought that like you would uh, assign dice and like maybe keep them there, like lock them in. So it's kind of like, well, I'm going to lock this dice, this ability, and then I only have four dice. I don't know why I thought that, but that was kind of how I think someone explained it to me. Definitely not like that at all when they talked about um, Marvel Dice Thrones. Marvel Dice Thrones. So I haven't played Marvel United. I don't know if I'll ever play Marvel Knight United. At least I won't own Marvel United. I will I will play it if someone brought that over to me just so I can experience it. But I definitely will never buy it. And I'd probably want to play the X-Men version first. I really want to try the X-Men version. But anyways, I played Captain Marvel for Marvel Dice Thrones. And it was okay. It was it was just very basic. You're rolling dice. You know, if you like some, you can keep it. If not, you can re-roll some. You get up to three re-rolls. Then you're going to declare an ability you want to use. Then your opponent can try to manipulate your dice if they have a card and combat power to manipulate it. And then you either cast your spell or you don't. And the damage was like massive. It's like nine damage. Unblockable. You're like, whoa. Whoa. So, um... And maybe it's because Captain Marvel was like a two dice um, character. I can't imagine playing a one dice. I think Black Panther's one dice in terms of difficulty, man, like Mar Captain Marvel is already really boring. It sucks because I like Captain Marvel a lot as a character. So I went and then we played Loki versus Thor. And I really... Yeah, you can't lock your dice. Yeah, I know. It sucks. So I played Loki versus Throne. I played Loki. And that one was more fun because I kind of felt like Loki. You know, uh, triggering my illusions. Using my bags of my my bag of tricks to come up with different kinds of solutions to problems. Uh, that was more fun. I think it because it gave me more agency and things to do. But what annoyed me with that one is you get five dice to roll. Some of Loki's abilities only take two dice to trigger. And sometimes I would have the two dice to trigger an ability and three dice to trigger another ability that took three dice. And I'm like, why can't I trigger both? Like I actually hit the dice to hit both. Why can't I hit both? But you're only allowed to trigger one, a one action at a time, one action at a turn. So that was kind of lame. I mean, maybe that's because my expectations were different. But I will say the 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 extra plays I did gave me a little bit more enjoyment in um, the game. But I was still, I'm still iffy on it. So I want to play more. Obviously, I want to play all the other characters. I want to see them all in action and how they interact with each other uh, before I go and do my final review. Uh, but yeah. It definitely is making me pause because I was really psyched, excited for the um, the new Kickstarter for Krampus versus Santa Claus. And now I'm like, hmm, do I need it? So I have not seen uh, Thor Love and Thunder yet. We just finished Ant-Man and Wasp. So we have actually... Um, we did use the ultimate cards. Yep, we used the ultimate cards and um, all that jazz. We did all that. And we just watched Ant-Man and Wasp. I was going to, obviously I'll talk about this in when I do my month in review. Uh, but Ant-Man and Wasp, first off, Ant-Man movies are like primo, in my opinion, like top of the MCU movies. I think the humor is probably the best humor. And Paul Rudd is an incredible Ant-Man Really, really like him. The girl, I don't know who the girl is that plays Wasp. I just know her from Jurassic World. And she really annoyed me in Jurassic World. So I never really have cared for her as a character. You know, it's weird because I'm assigning her actress as that character. Um, but I... Uh, she wasn't bad as Wasp. I enjoyed it. And I, I enjoyed that movie quite a bit. I, I did. I, I laughed more than I probably do in most movies. And Thor Ragnarok, uh, I didn't care for Thor Ragnarok the first time I saw it. And I saw it not in theaters. I saw it, you know, alone. But I hadn't watched other movies up to that point. So I had, like, no clue what the hell was going on. I didn't know where, why Hulk was where he was. I didn't know what the heck was going on with anyone. Uh, so I was like, what the heck? What's happening? So, uh, 
I agree with that, Stephen. Like, if I backed the um, the Marvel Dice, not the Marvel Dice Throne, the Dice Throne Krampus, it would probably be worth it for me. And I always want to make sure I'm doing safe backs, backs that are going to be safe for me in case I don't like. If it's not for me, I can always sell it and get my money back. So that is something I'm always considering. Um, and I probably knowing me because I'm a completionist. So here's the thing: I didn't want to get the I didn't want to get things with Marvel Dice Throne like extra because I didn't want to buy the other Dice Thrones. Like I really want to be like, you know what? I'm gonna keep Marvel, and if they launch more Marvel IP stuff, I'll buy it. That way, I just have all the Marvel things. But I really want to not get like the battle chest, the original stuff, because I have a really bad habit of being a completionist, like really bad. So I was really trying to resist the urge of getting things that were not in the Marvel Universe for Dice Throne. And so the Krampus one, it was like, yeah, that's cool. Uh, but am I going to be playing like... And then someone... So here's the thing. Someone in the Discord was like, I kind of like the idea of having all the characters plus Marvel. Because then it's like you're playing like uh, Super Smash Brothers where you have all these characters from different IPs battling against each other. And I was like, yeah, that is kind of cool actually. Like I don't mind it. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe I'll end up picking up. I don't know. I haven't made a decision yet. Nothing has been spoiled for, for me from any of the Spider-Mans. I haven't seen, I've only seen Homecoming, right? So I haven't seen, uh, Far From Home or... No way home. I always think it's interesting they put the home in the, in those Spider-Man movies. I, I I'm actually very much against any type of spoiling of a movie. And someone, one of my friends, another content creator on Facebook, shared a thing about Love and Thunder, and I was like, I know it's a meme, but I'm like, this seems like a spoiler. I don't want to. I want to go into them completely blind. I want to enjoy the movie, not knowing anything. Uh, what's interesting is I, I started that because of Star Wars. Star Wars, I feel like one thing, trailers put everything in movies as it is. And they spoil everything. Uh, although Star Wars and Disney kind of would throw bait and switches where they'd have things in the trailers that were not in the movies. So that's okay. Yeah, so talking about hunting down promos, like um, Too Many Bones and uh, I think Too Many Bones was the last one that did this to me they did their final Kickstarter and they're offering obviously all of their promos in the pledge manager from like 2018. You've got these Gen Con promos and whatnot and I'm buying crap. They're like, I don't need this stuff. Like why am I buying it? But I just get, I get FOMO and that's what I, one of the reasons I wanted my channel to be about like collection. It's a life. My channel is like a lifestyle channel. I, I always consider, I, when I try to talk about my channel compared to other people's channel, I'm like, it's a board game lifestyle channel. And I try to talk about like what it's like being a collector and a player in this hobby. And I suffer from it as much as any other person because I'm buying all the stuff with mostly my money. There are some things that have been coming my way, luckily from, from publishers, but a vast majority, it's like 98% of my collection is my own money. And so I suffer from FOMO as much as the next guy. And I want to make sure I, I hold that off as much as possible. Yeah, the trailers have gotten so bad in terms of like uh, spoiling things and revealing twists. And sometimes they, especially comedies, I can't watch a comedy trailer because they put the funniest lines in the trailer. And they're like, isn't that funny? Now you got to come watch the movie. Then you watch the movie. Nothing's funny until that scene comes up. And that's the only funny thing. And you're like, man, what a burn. You know, I actually was like missing some of like the original comedies. I kind of want to watch like movies like Super Bad again. I haven't seen that in so long. Uh, I, we were watching, I had a friend come over. We were watching Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Old classic. I still quote that stupid movie. Dumb and Dumber. I had another friend from California who never seen Dumb and Dumber. I'm like, how have you not seen this movie? That the Dumb and Dumber is single, probably the best quotable movie, like one-liners in history. That movie has so many quotable lines. So that's that's about it. So thank you for asking me about what Marvel movies I'm on. We are uh, we're almost to, so next I believe is actually Infinity War, right? And then Endgame. And uh, and then I'm gonna be like, then the question comes up. So here's the thing. Let me see if I can find it. The question comes up: Do I watch the Disney Plus shows? 
So I screenshotted them. It's going to be hard because my daughter, my daughter literally takes like 50 photos of her face. So, um, which I don't mind. I think she's adorable, but it's hard for me to find things when on my phone, when I'm trying to like look for things. And I also don't want to delete her pictures cause they're so cute. So it's like a, it's a, it's a hard thing to, to do as a parent. Like, what do you do? Hmm. Let me see. So I took a screenshot. Where is it? I did. I delete it. I might've deleted it. Cause I'm stupid like that. It was basically a screenshot of the movies after Endgame. So let me let me kind of talk about that. Do I watch Endgame uh, after Endgame? Do we? I think it's Spider Man, No Way Home. But then it's like What If and uh, Wanda Vision. I haven't seen any of those. At all. Uh, Moon Knight. I haven't seen any of them. So do I watch those or do I just go Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Eternals. I have seen Eternals. It was okay. Um, do I, so what do I do? What do you guys think? Like what, what do, are those Disney Plus movies worth it to, to, to go through? Man, where are? Maybe it's in gallery. I mean photos. Let me try gallery. They're like different and I don't know why they're different. Okay, here we are. Yeah, I got it. It's right here. So we just watched Ant-Man and Wasp. WandaVision was good. Well, I'm hoping so. So then it goes uh, Avengers Infinity War, Infinity War, Avengers Endgame. I don't know why the time says 2018 to 2023. That's interesting. Then this is Loki. Outside of our conception of time, but around here is what this uh, this list is saying. So it's saying Loki will happen right after Avengers Endgame. But I know it happens like in Captain America because it starts off in Captain America. So I was told that WandaVision, especially when she's in her black and white scenes, are is awful. And that was actually what made my wife be like, I don't care. I'm not watching it. So that'll be interesting to see if my wife will watch it. So after Loki, we have what if it said also outside of our conception of time. Then we have WandaVision, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. So I have not seen, I've seen Loki, which I feel like I might appreciate Loki more now that I'm kind of understanding all the characters. What if? WandaVision, I haven't seen any of this. Shang-Chi, haven't seen that. WandaVision, I've seen Falcon and the Winter Soldier is after Shang-Chi. Then we have Spider-Man Far From Home. I thought Spider-Man would be earlier. Then we have Spider-Man No Way Home. I also have to figure out how the hell am I going to watch those movies because I don't think I own them and they're not on Disney+. Plus. The first Spider-Man Homecoming I own as a digital movie on Vudu, so I was able to watch it. And I hate buying movies on Vudu because they're like 30 bucks. So, and then after that is Eternals. I have seen Eternals. Then Hawkeye, Moon Knight, Doctor Strange, and then Miss Marvel. So, what are your guys' thoughts? Do you stick to, if, you're, if, we're, if we're trying to engross ourselves in the M M uh, MCU and be a part of this universe and enjoy it, do you watch the TV shows or do you stick to the cinematics? Okay, well that makes sense. So what J Just a Geeky Dad says that I need to watch WandaVision if I'm going to understand Doctor Strange, which is great because the what's happened to me in previous MCU movies when I just like I talked about with Ragnarok, uh, I just kind of watched that. I'd watch like Iron Man 3 or something and then Ragnarok and you're like, what the hell's going on? Uh, so I want to make sure and that's kind of why I'm doing this. So I wanted to connect the pieces through the timeline so and that also i watched endgame right and in that ant-man like pops out in a van like randomly and i'm like what the hell is going on what happened to ant-man so i was really excited to watch ant-man and wasp to figure out what happened to ant-man but it's all it's like it's like the end credit scene so it's very very um very like loose so it sounds like you guys are recommending that i should watch the 
TV shows. So we'll try that. What I, what about what if? I don't think what if. Those are like 30 minute episodes, so they're probably really easy to get through. I don't know if my wife's going to want to watch Loki with me again. Uh, Loki was interesting. I felt like Loki would be really good, then really weird, and then really good. So, But the character, the guy who plays Loki is the perfect Loki. And that's one thing I give credit to, to Disney to is they've done such a good job with the casting of the characters. I am actually having a hard time letting go the original cast as like the new phase of Marvel people come in. It's really hard for me to accept that Captain America is not Chris Evans or Tony Stark is, is not there. Um, yeah, I really I think cut out again. I don't know why it's doing that. Really, really interesting as to why it's cutting out. So after this stream, which we're probably going to wrap this up. It's almost 11 o'clock at night. We've been doing this for an hour. Um, I'll figure it out. I'll try to figure out why the, the stream cuts in and out because that's really annoying. So that's about it. I, again, I, I really wanted more to be on this with uh, this top-down camera. But well, it's working now. Look at that. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this camera is not working. Oh, so I didn't talk about my plans of what we're doing. My hope is, um, my hope is to do, I would love to do a live stream playthrough with my, with some of my friends that are part of the player group. That is kind of my hope. So I've got, um, uh, this camera, the new one that you guys are on. I've got this camera up here. That's like a fix now to my ceiling. And I've got another camera for a third angle and I could potentially do a fourth angle. So I was like, I really want to do some more playthroughs and maybe try some live content. And I thought about maybe how fun would that be to like stream our game night, you know, and you could have a game night with Game Brigade or something. I thought that would be, uh, hey, hey, Jesse, Call for Two is a content creator named Jesse who does uh, live streams for um, detective solving cases. Uh, kind of like Chronicles of Crime, but more complex. And uh, uh, I would say uh, Sherlock Holmes, if you haven't played Sherlock Holmes. Really enjoy his stream. I generally hang out. Instead of live streaming, which I'm doing now, I normally would be watching uh, Jesse stream. I saw he was streaming. And Austin is from Ivy Studios, one of my favorite guys in the industry. Uh, he also has a channel where he does I've Backed, although I don't think Austin has done a video in a while for I've Backed. I'm assuming because they're so busy with the launch of Moonrakers as well as fulfillment for um, Mythic Mischief, which is back there. It's still the prototype copy. So um, I appreciate you guys stopping in. I know your new studio is taking forever in Austin. I still have an invite for you for my cabin. So what I was doing, Austin, let's see if the camera's working. The camera was not working very well, but I just was showing people this. I spent all day yesterday, um, organizing this. And I was like, it took me like three, not three hours. I was like maybe an hour to figure out myself how this kind of all went together. See, there goes the camera. The problem is the camera keeps cutting out. So that's why we're kind of ending things a little early. Uh, but I was actually fairly surprised that I got it mostly right. So that's pretty cool. So I was kind of showing people just like what this looks like and kind of super excited for it. Really, really excited for this whole contraption. So let's kind of close that up and cut back. Did you like that transition? I actually have two transitions. The other one has a weird sound to me lately, so I, I've cut out using it. So, uh, back to what we were talking about with, so I want to do potentially live streaming for the, um, the, the gameplays that we're doing. And then, uh, I just wanted to be able to do these kind of live streams, maybe impromptu live streams, nothing scheduled yet. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to do them on YouTube or Twitch, uh, right now it's obviously on YouTube because it's easier to, to do, um, but I wanted this as kind of like a trial run, kind of getting it back together. Well, thank you. So I noticed the removable car tray. I do think that's super neat because it's uh, gonna be super helpful for the base game cards. Part of me wishes that the, um, the cards for overload were also removable, but I don't think the way that's designed, it's really doable. 
uh, because I'll be playing with Overload all the time. Like that will always be part of the the game for me because that's like core. And uh, so you're gonna have like this removable thing, and then you're gonna have to lay out the Overload cards. But you know whatever, that's that's minor. But overall. Uh, really excited for for Titan. I'm really excited for everything that's been going on. Honestly, uh, we've got a playthrough session on Thursday. We're playing Moonraker's Titan Edition, as I mentioned. We'll be doing a couple of games and getting ready for our review, which will be hopefully done for next week. And that's about it for an update on terms of what we're what we're planning. So we got a bunch of big games coming in, as I mentioned: Oathsworn, Stars of Akaris, Moonraker's. We got reviews here with Libertaria that we're going to get going. And that's about it. So I do appreciate. Yeah, this was super. So let me show you. This is super frustrating. You cut to this screen and now it's back again. This thing keeps cutting out, but I'm now wondering if it's OBS or my computer because my main camera has cut out a few times too. And that's a brand new HDMI cable that I just got that's supposed to be like 4K like ready for this kind of stuff so yeah we definitely want to make sure that this is all working there's no kinks in it as we get ready for uh, a live session the other thing i have to figure out now it's it's all money though it's all money is audio how do we we get the group audioed and have it be studio quality so i'm looking at different types of shotgun mics and potentially looking at two shotgun mics coming up here and pointing in kind of uh, 180 degrees to kind of hit the whole table. Obviously, the side that you guys are on, oh no, you didn't see that. The side that you guys are on would, uh, would not have any players. It would have to be sitting around here. So it would have to be limited to like four players max probably. So I'm thinking if I had my cam my microphones up here coming down, it might be able to pick up enough audio uh, to make it, um, sound good because right now i'm using this obviously i'm using the studio uh this uh sure smb i believe mic works very well for a single person does not work at all for two people so until i figure that out i uh probably will not um be doing anything so let's cut this back here so unless there's any other questions if anyone has any questions comments concerns or anything i am going to probably wrap this up it's 11.30, almost. So, um, I also don't know if these bars, if this actually works. Like, I've set this up, but I have no idea if any of this does anything. Which I'm not asking you guys to tip or super chat. I don't even know what super chatting is. It was just options that I was able to select on YouTube. But I always, like, recent member, I, I don't know what that is. I wanted to say subscriber, like recent subscriber. So whatever. So that's about it. I appreciate everyone uh, staying and watching. Uh, we're going to go wrap this up then. I will talk to you all very soon. You guys have a great rest of your day. I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.